Start recording. Yep. Okay. We got the recording going. We got uh, we got ourselves up on uh, on Facebook, and uh, this is our Monday program. This is the pop up, and we do the pop up every single Monday. I love this show, and I don't want to avoid doing it. Sometimes I don't do the late night one. Sometimes I don't do anything for anything else. But this thing I love. I absolutely love it. Do you get me? I love it. Okay. As I'm pointing at the camera. Oh, well, let me see here. Who we, we got some people, we got got a bunch of people ready to go here. They're slowly coming on today, but they're coming on. So let's admit them. Okay. I'm Alex Bennett, by the way, in case you wondered about that. Okay. Admit all. Here we go. There's Paul Levin and there's Char Charlene and uh, there's uh, An Andrew and there's uh, Paul Levin. Yeah, there I am. And uh, 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 Len LaFrisco. And uh, we're going to admit Marjorie Miller here. And of course, uh, who else but Edward Berger. That's right. Oh, geez, that boy. You could launch a thousand ships with that. <laughs> who's, who's got their audio on or some audio on somewhere? There we go. That's gone. Okay. Uh, how y'all doing? Good. We're getting ready for a Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. What are you doing, Edward, on Thanksgiving? I'm going up to my niece. I'm leaving Wednesday. Do they all say when you come over, now don't laugh at his voice? No. They no, don't they don't that. say that. Okay. <laughs> like I'm warning you, he's coming over. Don't, don't laugh at his voice. <laughs> don't mention the voice. You know. But other people mention that voice to you, though, right? Not really. I don't see any. Just, just me. Yeah, just you. Well, I love cartoons, and you're okay. You're a living <laughs> example of that, you know. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's something but, unusual about his voice. I, I didn't catch it. <laughs> he you, is that the, called sarcasm? No. Oh, okay. I'm sure I was no, Andrew's not sarcastic. sarcastic at all. I did not know. He, he, oh, no, he's I not like sarcastic Edward's at voice. all. <laughs> see here. Here comes Mike uh, Chisholm, and here comes Charlie Wallace. Oh, boy, we have a nice little bunch. Nice crowd today. I like this. Nice bunch. You're in a different uh, different studio or someplace, uh, Mike? Oh, this is my office. That's your office. Yeah, you guys got me for 20 minutes, 25 minutes today. And then I, then I have to go to, I love saying this, I have to go to court. Wow. You what did you do? Court? What for? What, what did you do? <laughs> I wish it was something more interesting than that. No, a friend of mine, she was involved in a car accident about five years ago um, and, and has been tussling with the insurance company ever since. And so uh, now it's gone to trial. There was no settlement. And uh, oh. I have to go in to provide a uh, character reference for who she was before the accident versus who she is now. Is she somebody different now? <laughs> uh, some might say, yeah, it's uh, it, it affected her. It affected her physically very much, but it also affected her personality quite a bit. And she's been a close friend of mine for a long time and she still is, but yeah, yeah she's, she's they, pretty different. Do they, do they know in court that you're a known liar? <laughs> uh, how much, well, how much money are they asking for? I I think that she is going to have a million dollar plus settlement uh, or a judgment for her out of this. I think that they were offering in the neighborhood of 700 and the lawyer's like, that's not, no, you, you need to put at least a million in your pocket for what you went through and what you are now yeah. going to go through. Yeah. So she's got, she's got significant permanent back um issues and then the emotional stuff is also um quite severe she you know i love her to death uh mm -hmm. but yeah she's 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 quite different than she was oh wow wow sounds pretty important to me yeah we're, we're going back into court next month <laughs> again again oh get uh, well, no it's it's you know and, and guess who the judge is isn't he kind of busy yeah, <laughs> apparently this, I is would the, say. this is on the twenty second of December. So apparently he he figures the Trump trial is going to be finished by then. Wow, and, and you know, I, I don't know how how you feel as a judge about going from Donald Trump to something <laughs> as trivial as us. 
Yeah. I don't look at it that way. He's going from Donald Trump to Alex Bennett. This guy's got a great month going on. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably more and more uh, uh, what can i call it more taken aback by the fact that the other guy is a basketball player you know so you know sports trumps radio every time you know so. but anyway it's, it's just it's just more stuff you know but it's it's just fun that we're not we're probably not even going to show up we don't have to our lawyer has to. Well, I wanted to go to the judge and just thank him for what he's how he's handled his court. Yeah, yeah. Really, he's, has. he's a celebrity. And, yeah. and, and, and he's letting Donald get away with anything because if they if they Donald ap appeals it, so no, yeah. I let them do this. And also to his court clerk to say how much I admired her being in a Donald Trump tweet. <laughs> Isn't she running for a seat? She's running for she's running for judge. Yeah. State, uh, state. Uh, no, I'm I'm sure. Yeah, the, the same thing, probably Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah. But the broadcast uh, gods are blessing you. That is amazing. You're gonna have material on this for 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 a month from that. That's forever. awesome. Well, I don't know because I'm not going. I just I've had it with this whole thing. Well, I may uh, go just because I want to see the judge. I want to go thank... oh, just for that. You have ramble yeah. time for the week. That's that's the only reason yeah, why we, I would go. We used to know him when he wasn't a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he has security? What do you mean? I'm sure. Oh, I'm I'm oh, sure yeah. he probably has security right now. Yeah, because they're it, opening opening a concession stand with popcorn so and sodas and. Oh really? <laughs> Do you know that when Donald Trump Jr. testified the other day, there were only four people in the in the uh, courtroom. Yeah, they said on all of it. That was weird to hear that. Did you hear the same thing? They yeah. said it on John Oliver. Yeah. 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 So, whatever. I'm mad at John Oliver. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, because this week, as part of... No, the, Alex, it was last week. It well, was this, last week, week. this week's show, the one we just watched. That's not the one that you were upset with. It was the week uh, before. What do you, you don't know what I'm going to say then. <laughs> <laughs> you want to bet? And, and, and by the way... Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Um, uh, it, it, but by the way, uh, if I if I mention this and it isn't the one that I met, she thought I was mentioning, then she's fine. Otherwise, she's losing her goddamn mind. Well, we know that. That's true. She, you know what she's doing now? She's using as an excuse for everything. Well, I have memory issues. Which well, I do. who doesn't? Yeah. I at least admit it. I don't remember if I do. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, memory issue. So uh, anyway, uh, but no, uh, he he put down Apple TV. Oh, did he ever? Yeah. Oh, yeah, year. he really did. Yeah. That, that and was, you know something? Was, uh, I think he doesn't know, has never watched Apple TV because... If you've ever watched Apple TV, my first, if I was going to write him a letter and I still might do it, I'm going to say, hey, it's better than HBO. Well, it's where HBO was in the 70s and 80s. It's like HBO used to be. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, and you were right, Alex. It was yesterday. You, see? Yep. Yeah, that was yesterday. That yeah. was yesterday's show. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Was that, was that okay. Your, was that what you thought I was referring to, Marjorie? I thought it was the week before. Oh, God. Oh God! I just thought the oh, God. Am, am I uh, am I going to be a, a caretaker? Boy, oh boy! <laughs> anyway, so uh, that was um, you know, but he put down Apple TV, and I'm going, why? You know, you can't joke about Apple TV. The joke should be Peacock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got to agree with you that one. Every his his comment, his comment had merit though, because again, a lot of people don't realize Steve Carell. Has a series on Apple TV. He, he's, you know, what's Steve Carell been doing? Well, he's been on Apple TV. A lot of people don't know that, and I think his joke was it's Carell. Carell is on Apple TV. Is Do we the, care? On the the what's the the Daily Show? Uh, not Daily Show, but the 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 new show. Isn't he on that with Tina Fey? No, not Tina Fey. Um, but that's not on, on an Apple TV. I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. I'm lost. This might be on Apple TV Canada, but it isn't on Apple TV here. 
had a brain fart. What was the name of that show? Um, the new show, the daily, the morning, the, it's like a Good Morning America show ripoff type. No? Okay. I'll, I'll find it. You mean the, the show, the, you mean good, the, the morning show? show? Uh, That's not Tina Fey. It's, no, it's not it's, Tina Fey. Steve Carell was on that on the first season. That's what it, that, yeah, that one there. Yeah. So what was he making fun of? No, he said that it's where celebrities go to die because there's a lot of people who don't know that a lot of these big name celebrities have these shows on Apple TV, but because they don't get seen, people don't realize. The morning show has gotten a lot of play. Um, a lot of shows they do are getting really good reviews. Yeah, for and sure. they have a lot of them. I mean, there for is sure. no, there's no better show in years than I've seen on TV than... Um, uh, lessons, lessons in, in uh, chemistry. Lessons in chemistry. Uh, it's just a great show. But what his point was is a lot of people haven't heard of these shows because Apple TV doesn't have the same uptake as some of the other. They don't have as many as many viewers, but certainly the the way he was doing it was putting them down. Yeah, it was for sure. And, oh yeah, and they don't deserve that. They're too good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm always amazed by how many things I I, I go to on uh, Apple TV mm -hmm. that I figure aren't even going to be any good. And then you watch them and you go, wow, that was terrific, you know? So uh, I, I just thought it was a bad, th now, a lousy thing to do to Apple TV because they're now my favorite. I keep calling them the new HBO in lieu of the old HBO, which doesn't even exist anymore. So, you know, but anyway. Anyway, so uh, it, uh, this is Thanksgiving week. I didn't expect as many people here today because people this are is it. well. People are busy out hunting turkeys, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, um, uh, we're having some people. How many people are we having over? Seven. Seven. Is there enough turkey for everybody? Yeah. Last year, she ordered her turkey. Oh. From from uh, where it was it? Uh, Fresh it, Direct. Fresh Direct. Well, let me just preface it by saying they had major problems. Well, I in don't. The kitchen. I don't give a crap. Well, that's why all this. See, it's my Thanksgiving. They ruined. <laughs> you know, and so she. I told her never order a turkey from them again. You know, and what, I don't listen to him. Guess what she did this year? <laughs> oh it no! Came, it all came today. Everything. <laughs> and what happened last year? Yeah. Apparently, Pamela's having to set up Jeff's. Uh, yeah. Hi, Pam. Hi, guys. Yeah, Hi. you're you're fine. Just throw him in there, and you'll be. I know. I got him. Now I got him. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. 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 Yeah. Didn't they deliver it twice last year to you guys? Or something like wasn't it a? No. What happened last year is they they eventually did didn't they eventually did. Uh, they eventually did deliver it to us. Didn't they deliver it to us like on the... Yeah, they delivered it to us about 11 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day. I, I made them take it back. I yeah, said, I forget it. So yeah, how long how, how long does it take the to cook your turkey? The day before, I was running around yeah. and getting leftovers from every supermarket. And she was, you know, here's a wing here and here's a breast I mean, there. it was horrible. Everybody was out of everything. So, so where does she order from this year? Fresh no, but they had a problem. They're, they're... Oh, they had a problem. They yeah. had a major problem. Yeah, it ma Actually, it was a major problem last year getting a turkey because uh, there was a lack of turkeys because of, I think, a, some kind of turkey infestation or something. Right. Right? Bird flu. Right. Everything. Is it bird flu? Bird flu is a liver thing. Why don't they just get their shots? How <laughs> <laughs> she ran out. Yeah. But uh, so bird flu. Uh, yeah. And so last year they, they were... but. If they better get it right this year, I'm going to find out where they live and get a gun and go get them. <laughs> don't I, say that. You hmm? don't have a gun. I wouldn't even know how to You're use You're going to take off gun. your ring and tell them I, to stand I think up. I know how to load them from watching a lot of movies, but that's about it. You know. Wait, didn't, didn't they huh? teach you in the Navy how to shoot a gun? Well, actually, I, I believe it or not, I in the Navy had to go through um, a sh sh um, marksmanship. <laughs> and they took me out to a range, and I shot a gun. And believe it or not, they I, I was the best one there. I, oh, I, my I, God. I was like, <laughs> what? Our poor 
country. <laughs> I mean, our poor country. I was the best, the best marksman they had out of the group. Sure. Hitting the target like crazy. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm officially a marksman. Okay. In what branch of the service? I, I was in uh, her, His Majesty's Navy. <laughs> Yes. And where were you stationed? I was stationed, uh, let's see here, I was stationed, well, first of all, I was stationed on a ship where I threw up a lot, <laughs> and it was in dry dock, okay, <laughs> so just the idea of being on the ship made me throw up, uh. so then uh, I, you know, I, I did a, I've been lucky in life. I, I was writing constantly to Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood saying I'm going into the Navy. I'm a professional broadcaster. I think you could use my services. And uh, after I was on the ship uh, for a couple of months, I guess, the USS Topeka, uh, I uh, they, they called me into the their offices up there in the ship or whatever. And they said, who do you know at the Department of Defense? And I said, nobody. They said, well, you've just been requested by, and we have to give you to Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. And that's where I spent my time in the Navy, in Hollywood. <laughs> now, well, nobody can, ever attacked can, us in Hollywood, so, you know. You, yeah. can, you, can <laughs> yell, you can yell about it, but in my time at Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, at no point did any, any, any enemy, <laughs> enemy missiles Get right. Santa Monica Boulevard. So, <laughs> any records with a bullet? I can't talk anymore. What? Any records with a bullet? This uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I I went I I used to broadcast uh, doing the news once an hour. A seaman, a first uh, seaman, uh, what is, was it? First class Alex Bennett or Bennett Schwarzman, right? <laughs> And uh, 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 somewhere across the kind of, across the waves or whatever, I can't talk today. They um, in uh, in China, they were writing my name down, <laughs> and and I was considered a propagandist for the United States. Nice. And if I ever went to China, well, we went to China. I I, I should be arrested and put on trial. Nothing happened to you. Nothing happened. It brings up a serious question, though. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you remember Good Morning Vietnam and how that they uh, they uh, chose off the newswire which stories they would tell and which stories they wouldn't tell, that kind of a thing. Was there any of that going on while you were there? I don't remember any of that going on. You know, I mean, we just rip, ripped and read, read, you know, we ripped yep. off the, it used to be a, an hourly thing called News at a Glance. And that's what we would read. And I got on and I, I started reading and I was okay. You know, I did fine. I was there for, you know, a year and a half, something like that. And I had to live in my own apartment in Hollywood, which wasn't glamorous because they only gave me a certain amount to live on, you know, but I spent my entire time in the Navy. And then the last couple of weeks in the Navy, they then sent me to a place to be mustered out and they made me a shore patrolman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like a, a, a Navy cop. And if you can imagine that, if there was any trouble, I ran the other way. <laughs> but I, I, was a, I was a cop, yeah. yeah. And that's where I found people were getting mustered out the same time I was, who I knew because we got mustered in at the same time. Uh -huh. and, and then I was told by one of them, uh, I was talking to, he said, I was on the U.S., I, I was on the, um, oh, what were the two boats? The uh, USS Maddox and the Sea Turner Joy. <laughs> the two boats that were shot upon in the Gulf of Tonkin. Oh. And he was on like the Sea Turner Joy. And I said, boy, you must have seen some action out there. <laughs> and he said, what action? He said, we were shooting at something out in the out in the dark. There was and nothing shot back. And then we went back to shore, and they gave us medals. <laughs> he said nothing went on out there. That was big phony. And so I constantly said that on the air for years. And finally, I was proven right. Yep. So false flag event. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I, I used to say this when I was at ABC doing a talk show, and ABC News says, you can't say that. You don't know if that's true. And then one day the news came through that the whole thing was a, was a you know, a, a phony deal. And uh, they called me up and go, how did you get that information? <laughs> I said, I just listen. <laughs> you know, that's all I do. And uh, so that that was my big scoop. That was before Vietnam heated up, right? No, that's what he that's what heated, heated up. up. Yeah. Yeah. The Gulf of Tonkin yep. incident in which there was nothing out there. There was literally nothing out there. But they uh, and then they blasted the hell out of North Vietnam. Yeah. So that that was that story. So huh. anyway, I I served in the Navy. And you know something? Last. Uh, what was it? Monday? Was it Monday? It was Veterans Day? Yeah. And not one of you said thank you for your service. Well, thank you for your service. Alex. You're welcome. Thank you for your service. Yeah. I, you know what? Let him in on Colbert tonight. Well, after it's on, you know. Watch it tomorrow. I kind of have a hard time watching Letterman lately. Yeah. Because he's kind of getting a little. This, this time of year, he should be able to get some work as a Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he's letting that beard short, I think, lately. Uh, but why is he doing Colbert? I mean, I, I thought he hated him. Uh, it wasn't, <clears throat> my opinion is that it's not that he hated Colbert in any way. It was that he didn't enjoy the way that uh, that he left CBS in that his stuff was all just discarded the way it was, and and he had some he had some ill feelings towards the network, but it wasn't really personal against Colbert though. So yeah, well, tonight's well, the first time that he's going back to the Ed Sullivan Theater since May twentieth of twenty fifteen. You know, for, uh, yeah, but you know, uh, um, the Colbert show sucks. Yeah, I mean, purely sucks. It's uh, also number one though. So no, you know, no. Uh, no, is it number one right now? No, yeah. Kimmel. Oh, Kimmel's number one. Oh, good for him. That makes me happy. Yeah. And a He's show. so good. He's Kimmel's, awesome. Kimmel's good. That first half, uh, that first 20 minutes on Kimmel, wonderful. We yeah. watch it the next day. Me yeah. too. And uh, he, uh, you know, he's the only one that truly understands what a late night talk show is supposed to be. I'm so glad he's number one because he it was Colbert. So... I don't know. No, it was, first of it was Fallon. Yeah. Then it was Colbert for a short time. And now it's it's Kimmel. At least that's what I read. At least a couple of weeks ago, it was Kimmel. I think I yeah. been, Fallon, Fallon's unwatchable. What? Jimmy Fallon. Is oh, he's absolutely unwatchable. Terrible. 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 Um, but Kimmel is funny. Yeah. Kimmel's funny. He's smart. He's, you know. He does odd things like Letterman used to do. Well, you know, I was talking to Marjorie about this today. The sad part about late night, those late night shows, like we, let's let's take first of all all the shows that come on after the late, the number one late night show like Fallon, after Colbert, and after mm -hmm. uh, after. Well, is it, is, I don't think there's nobody Seth nobody Meyer. comes on after Kimmel. I don't think Seth Myers comes on after uh, yeah after after, after yeah. Fallon. Yeah. Yeah. Not on ABC. I don't think he has an ABC. Uh, yeah. There's no ABC. But after. the fact is that none of those shows have the quality that the old Letterman shows at their worst yeah. had. I mean, there was a sense when when I watched the old uh, NBC shows of, of, of Letterman, they were having just one hell of a time. You know, and you could feel it. And they would do anything that was goofy, whether it was throwing a pencil through a window or, you know, having a monkey run around with a camera on his head, you know. But these shows aren't that way. These shows are very structured, you know, mm -hmm. very carefully planned, as though the hosts don't really want to go out of that comfort zone. And and Dave always went outside of a comfort zone. He liked going outside of a comfort zone. Yeah. Did, did you like Carson, uh, Alex? I thought Carson, for what he was, was terrific. At yeah. the time. I remember one time I was out of work. Well, many times I was out of work and I was sitting home and I was watching Carson late night. And I watched him and I said, you know, he's really good. Yeah. You know, he's really 
really good. Uh, and and uh, uh, but uh, Carson Carson didn't make me laugh as much, you know. But he was a good he was actually a good talk show host mm -hmm. because he realized, as I think Steve Allen once said to me, that uh, a host of a talk show uh, shouldn't try to top the guest. Yeah, because the really guest is there to do for you, to work for you, to make the show work. So why should you try and top him? And uh, uh, that was a lesson I learned fast. And and he was, uh, that's one of the few things Steve Allen ever said that I agreed with, you know. Uh, and he also, um, so he, he said, you know, I, and don't try and top the guest. Don't try and top him. And uh, that it, Carson knew that. Carson never tried to top the guest. You know, he would embellish what the guest had said, like, oh, you're so right, you know. But uh, he didn't, it, it, it's just, it, it was, he was good. He was really good. Yes. What, what, was his talent uh, um, finding or, or somebody that worked for him, uh, Carson, what, uh, that uh, um, had a talent for finding new talent because the, the memories that I have were the special moments on Carson, like Barbara Streisand singing happy days are here again, or, you know, like uh, comics that would come on that you, that, that, uh, that made it big because they were on his show or Joan Rivers or whatever. So it was that uh, part of his well, talent. Well, I'll tell you, yeah, I think it had part of his talent, but I think the guy who did that first was Jack Parr. Mm. Uh, Parr literally wow. took people that had no star quality. And made them stars. Yeah. And uh, I remember it, if you look at the people that were on par, there are people you wouldn't even remember today. But he, while they were on par, they were stars. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and so he was good at that. And I think a lot of what par did set up uh, carried over to what Carson did. And then Carson embellished on that. You know, so I mean, but uh, uh, yeah, is, I, 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 oops, excuse me. I just, I may have, I hope I didn't lose all you people there. I just, no, we're here. We're here. No, no, I, I, it wasn't that. It was the, the people who are watching because I moved the whole well, thing over. Uh, Carson did Macaulay as well in the comedy clubs. That was mm -hmm. a big thing because he had taken the show to Burbank and it, uh, when he had Jim Macaulay. Yeah, Macaulay would go out to the clubs and yeah. you know, yeah, uh, and and Macaulay was actually where they their main place to get comedians was uh, um, the comedy store. Um, the, the, they went they Macaulay went there most of the time. Yeah, and so if you look at all those people that played the comedy store, they all wound up on Carson, whether it was Letterman or whether it was, uh, you know. Um, who are some of the others? I'm trying to remember now, but you know, a lot of comics uh, from the comedy store. Yeah, the um, improv as well. Seinfeld uh, didn't get past Mitzi Shore, so he was a Seinfeld was never a comedy store guy in those years. He was an improv guy, so he went to the improv too. But the comedy store was by far the uh, the mainstay yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, Letterman was there, and he uh, uh, J Jimmy Walker, my old yeah. old op at uh, WMCA. Uh, Freddie Prince. Huh? Freddie Prince. Freddie Prince, yeah. Dreesen, he was on a lot. He went on Tonight Show a lot. I remember I remember Jimmy saying to me when I was at WMC, he says, I'm 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 down the I'm down at the, the improv tonight. You should come down and see me. And I said, oh, Yeah, well, I'll try to, Jimmy. But I I didn't see how this guy was running the control board for him. He could be funny. <laughs> Next well, thing I you know, the, the guy's the number one black comic in America. Yeah. Uh, Pryor was really big at the comedy store as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, yeah, my history in comedy. Hello, Brian. Hello. <laughs> He's <laughs> waving. You going home? Yeah, I was in Lodi this morning and, and had a meeting, and I just hopped off the meeting to hop on with you guys. The most common statement on my night show is uh, is uh, Brian saying, "Yeah, I was in Lodi today." Because <laughs> Lodi is yeah. where, where your company is, right? 
Yeah, it's our new cup, our new building that we're moving to. So we've moved about fifty percent of the stuff over there. So every every time I talk uh, to you, though, you're moving into a new building. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, COVID had us move around a little bit. Uh oh, geez, hold on, hold on. Oh my God, my alarms. Uh, yeah, COVID had us move around for a little bit, but this is our going to be our new headquarters. So, yep. But I'm needed, so that's good. They they pay for everything, take care of me to go there every day. Yeah. So they're good here. They're good to you. Yeah, you're yeah, very good. Your name Nemesis Mandy isn't here today. Oh, really? <laughs> I hope she's okay. You know, when, when somebody isn't here, I go, I hope they're okay. You know, I immediately uh, worry about them. It is a holiday weekend. Yeah, it's, it's not a holiday up. weekend, and the holiday is still four days away. Some people take the whole week off. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is and then I got to go to court. Um. Oh, by the way, this is our Thanksgiving. Let me just yeah tell you. Thursday. Yeah, I know that's what I was, Thursday is technically the Thanksgiving, right? Yes. Yes. Here. So, yes. Did it start where, okay, well, you got Thursday off, so we might as well take Friday off as well, and it's yes. just grown yeah. since then? Because Friday, call- technically, other than a shopping yeah. holiday, is not a holiday, right? It's not no, a holiday. And everything's no, everything's open that Friday. But it has, been no named, it has been named uh, Black Friday. Okay. Yeah, we but, always but get couple- Thursday and Friday off. Oh, oh, oh. Right, right, yeah. So the calendar that comes at the beginning of the year always shows Thursday and Friday off. But like you guys were talking about, Either on the night show I wasn't there or last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, my company is working every single day except for Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. Wow. So manufacturing, we have we have a lot of revenue for testing still, and COVID's oh, picking up a little bit. So we have a big demand. So COVID's We're picking working. up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I the flu. Flu's picking up. I should say. I shouldn't say COVID. I should say flu. Flu's picking RSV? up. RSV. Right RSV. A little of everything, so it's it's good for us. Just a little touch, a little touch of pandemic for us, please. <laughs> RSV, uh, uh, COVID. How's M O U S E? What's her name? Um, oh man, the one the woman comic. Uh, she she said she had a great line. She was talking about AIDS when everybody was losing so much weight. She says she just wanted a touch of the AIDS to lose some weight. <laughs> it was oh, uh it, it was it yeah it was uh oh man I forget what her name is but okay, I, I was watching i was watching an old set on on youtube with uh my old friend gilbert godfrey uh, and he had this joke he said uh so a guy goes to prison and a guy he's he's worried about prison and the guy saddles up to him says new here he says yeah he says you're gonna love it it's terrific Oh yeah, yeah. You like food? He says, yeah, I love food. He says, Monday, that's dinner night. They make the mm-hmm. best food. They bring in these, these chefs from all over the world to make the food. It's incredible. He says, really? He says, yeah. He says, you like music? He says, I love music. He says, you're going to love Tuesdays because they bring in the best rock bands from all over the country. And they play right here in the prison on Tuesday nights. He says, you you like movies? He says, love movies. He says, first run movies on Wednesday. Something's playing in the theaters right now, so you'll never miss it while you're in prison. He said, let me ask you, are you a homosexual? He said, yeah. Hmm. He says, you're going to hate Thursdays. I love that joke. Yeah, you know, it sucks because a couple of these guys that were really, really good. I've been listening to them, Norm MacDonald and yeah. Saget a little bit. And it sucks because, man, some of these guys we just lost this year were really, really good comedians. You know, yeah. I, was, I was never a big fan of Norm MacDonald. I guess he just kind mm-hmm. of missed my oh, radar. I always liked him. Well, but he missed yeah. my radar. And when I went back and looked at his work, mm-hmm. I went, this guy was phenomenal. Yeah. Was phenomenal. And, and, he, and he has yeah. He he had this whole joke about shallow graves. 
you know, about they, they're always found in shallow graves. And he went into detail how he would lure a woman into his van and make sure he had a deep grave already. I mean, he went into detail. It was so hilarious. It was really, really good stuff he did. Uh, Gilbert, Gilbert, I, I one of the most memorable moments of my life was sitting in uh, the uh, what's that what's that hotel what's the name of it now i forget the name of it now but we went for high tea at a hotel and it was me and a bunch of other people and gilbert godfried and penn Jillette. oh jesus oh, good. at the palace and no 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 the uh the motel six no what's the, what's the one that Jimmy <laughs> yoko used to stay at I, i'm trying to i'll remember the name soon but anyway it doesn't matter it's fancy hotel fancy tea room they bring in the tea they bring in the little you know food and stuff and uh, all of a sudden uh gilbert godfrey and pendulette decide they're going to start saying seeing who could come up with the dirtiest joke <laughs> and in this very pristine setting you were hearing some of the dirtiest jokes you have ever heard in your life going back and forth between these two dirty joke pros okay and this lasted for, I think, about an hour. Jeez. By the time it was over, I couldn't even, I, my sides were aching. You know, and it, I have to say, Pem was very good. Gilbert beat him. Gilbert was the best when it came to dirty jokes. <laughs> uh, and uh, that, that was one of the most memorable moments of my life. I walked away from it saying, I can tell people this for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know. And uh, they were wonderful. And that's when I first heard, that's when I first heard uh, Penn did the bear joke. <laughs> I love the bear. Which is almost operatic. It's like the aristocrats, okay? It's an operatic joke. You can either tell it fast or you can tell it's really, really slow and involved and so on. And uh, and I think, I think actually what happened was Penn told his version of the bear joke and then gilbert told his version of the bear joke wow. which i don't know if any of you know the bear joke how many of you know the bear joke i do <laughs> uh, you see oh you know the charlene knows the bear joke well then tell it because i listen at night i oh, listen to the oh, night oh. show a lot oh and i told this i told the joke yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i hate to say this guys i gotta go and uh i can't oh, wait hi. to come on later and hear you all say i'm glad he's gone <laughs> okay okay see you later Bye. that was Bye. uh that was that's my chisholm up in canada and we're sure yeah. glad he's good just on. repeat it because a lot of people here haven't heard it i sure well, wish he could it, laugh. It, you see if i if i tell it i can either tell it in the operatic style which goes on for a half hour <laughs> or i can do the quick version which is in many ways just as funny but the longer you can go with it, and the more involved you can get with it, the funnier the punchline becomes. But basically, it's about a guy who goes to hunt in uh, uh, a um, uh, in the forest, and here uh, he comes upon this bear, this giant grizzly bear, and he pulls out his gun, and he fires the gun at the bear, and misses. And the bear walks over to him grabs the shotgun, throws it down on the ground, says, turn around. I'm going to teach you a lesson. And he fucks him in the ass. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been fucked in the ass by a big grizzly bear, but it's not fun. Okay. <laughs> and the guy is lying, ble his rear end bleeding on the forest ground. And he's just, you know, he's just out of it. And the bear leaves, says, don't do that again. The guy figures, I, you know, it, it, it must have, I don't know how I missed, but I can't miss him again. So he grabs the shotgun. He stands up, and as the bear's walking away, he shoots at the bear. Boom, he misses him. <laughs> the bear turns around, walks up to him and says, boy, you really didn't learn your lesson. Get on all fours. Go ahead spread them and he fucks him in the ass and he fucks him more and he just fucks him roundly in the ass you know this is not, this is going to be uh, not going to get monetized by youtube um <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah 
and, and the guy is just he's on the ground he's just so humiliated it's the worst part is the humiliation not to mention the pain and so the bear gets up walks away and as he's walking away the guy goes i can't miss a third time it's impossible it's absolutely impossible shoots the gun misses the bear the bear turns around grabs the gun throws it on the ground looks at the guy and says you know somehow i don't think you came here to hunt <laughs> now the longer that joke can go on the more punch the punchline has mm -hmm. you know? but that in short that in short that's a short version when Penn yeah. does it, it's a whole opera. I mean, he talks about the guy bleeding and he's just a mess. And the bear is, you know, just it, it, it goes. He goes on for about a half hour with this story. <laughs> but I saw Gilbert on TV the other day uh, doing the short version. So only he has it. It's a shotgun and then it's a it's it's a machine gun and then it's a cannon. <laughs> it's a. But uh, that's how it changes. But that's, I love that joke. It's a great joke. Um, and then the aristocrats was the other joke that was operatic in which people, everybody who who told the, the, they made a whole movie out of it, told the aristocrats joke, had a different version of the joke. And it, um, it's it's a whole involved story about a, an agent. And a, the guy comes in, he says, you got to see my my act. It's my wife and my children and me and the dog. And then he says, well, what do you do? And then he discusses it. And it's it's a disgusting act, really. It's, you know, uh, and it's it, the dog has his has having sex with the wife and the wife is having sex with the giving head to the to the son. And the father is like watching this all while uh, uh, having sex with the dog. And on and on, the joke just keeps going on and on. Everybody tells it differently, and but the punchline is the same. This amazing act. What do you call yourselves? We call ourselves the aristocrats. <laughs> you know, so that's uh, that's the aristocrats joke, and that is the other. That's the joke that comedians tell each other because each one has a different way of telling it, and it's a, that, it's a huh. And in the movie, right. I'll a lot of them credit like Gilbert of having the best version, you know. So. They think that Gilbert did the best version, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to say that Penn's was so involved <laughs> and so minute in detail that it kind of was the operatic version of the joke. Okay. Where where Gilbert with that voice, give you an idea what yeah. it sounds like. Uh, how are you doing, uh, uh, Edward Berger? That's right. There, that's close. It's close. Say Affleck. Affleck. See, <laughs> see. Anyway, so, uh, wow, I miss him. <laughs> I do. I really miss him. Every every what every year, Marjorie we used to go over to our friend's place for yeah know, the day before the day after Christmas or the Christmas. day before New Year's or whatever. And uh, he would always show up, and he and I would like to stand there, noshing on ham, <laughs> and uh, talking. And I, I just love the man. He was so intelligent, so smart. Uh, and uh, besides being a fine comedian, he was a he was a great great mind. He was a brilliant guy. Loved him. Just loved him. And every time we have a New Year's come along, I miss him. You know. Just one of those things that happen. I only saw him once a year. I couldn't even get him. I once I cut once I got him to come on the radio show at Sirius. But I, you know, but and, and once I got him to come on the the, uh, uh, the TV thing we did, uh, which is up if you want to go find it. Uh, and and it was a uh, you know he was it was it was brilliant. I loved him. So anyway, okay. Now that I bummed you all out. <laughs> Uh, so what's everybody doing? What do you what are you doing, Paula, for Thanksgiving? I will be at my son and daughter in law's house, and uh, my contribution is uh, uh, is to make the cranberry sauce and the sweet potatoes. Yeah, Marjorie and I were mentioning, and I'm not I'm not putting you down that we can't stand cranberries. 
Well, you, haven't tasted my cra- you haven't tasted my cranberry sauce. Well, no, but it's just something about cranberries, you know. But you may it may be that you would change my mind, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, 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 let me see here. Who, uh, who, who well, what, what are you doing, Charlie? Oh, you know, what I'm I'm watching football all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what are you having a turkey? Probably not. I'll probably have barbecue. When I was single and I didn't have a family, uh, I would make a turkey. Oh. And then I would invite over all the comedians I knew who weren't living at home, who mm-hmm. were back home, and invite them over to have some turkey. You know, and I made it. I know Marjorie finds that impossible to believe. <laughs> but one one year, Marjorie, before we trot off to Lolly. <clears throat> It's fine. Oh, you don't I, have to wait till Thanksgiving. I want to have a. To I want to have a cook off. <laughs> cook a turkey. I'll cook a turkey, and then we will invite a bunch of people over to taste one, uh, both of them, and tell I'll us. I'll let you make them. yours. Huh? You. I'll let you make yours and declare you the winner. Why is that? <laughs> you, you, you give I don't up? Cook anymore? Yeah, her idea of cooking is Instacart. <laughs> it, I don't. It, I don't cook. I don't blame her. Since COVID, I stopped wearing makeup. I stopped letting my hair cut get colored. Yeah. Um, I stopped cooking. Yeah. She did this all after she married me, by the way. During COVID. Yeah. You know, everybody else got an advantage of her being made up, being the <laughs> cook, all of that. Me, I get the dregs. Okay. Oh, jeez. You, you don't, you used to make, are you, how, how, you're getting this from what Instacart? What is it? The uh, problem is, Alex, you never ate leftovers. You maybe yeah. one day after you would eat the oh, soup, love, and that I was love, it. I love leftovers. I just one day. I, I don't like le- well. I don't like leftovers for the rest of the week. Well, you know, when I was living by myself, I'd cook for Saturday or Sunday, invite people over, and then Monday through Friday, I go to work, <laughs> and I have something from leftovers and they were fresh they weren't out of a can they were delicious mm-hmm. i could eat it all week now now this this turkey yeah. is from where again from uh fresh direct fresh direct it's half baked it's half so am i it's great <laughs> so am i <laughs> you like things half baked huh yeah half baked yeah where are you going uh um uh, uh, uh andrew Tomorrow I'm running out to the farm to pick up my bird. They wrung his little neck today, so he should be plucked by now. It'll be warm package. You know, It'll wherever be- you go to get the ch- a turkey, they should also sell you the Christmas tree. <laughs> because don't you put up the Christmas tree right after New Year's? What would yeah, I right do with the Christmas the- tree? Yeah, yeah. I don't have a Christmas tree. You don't? No. Well, you're Jewish. Family is. I'm a proud atheist. I- yeah, well, I'm an atheist. I don't have too, any of that but... pagan crap in my house. I'm an atheist. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and I've got this year's. Usually, I have thirty something people, but this year we're going to have just six, six or seven. Thirty people. Yeah, hmm. I usually get it like a thirty-two pound bird. This year, Ooh. I got a smaller one. And I remember when my business manager oh. used to hold a, um, a Passover seder, and he had a huge table, and there was like thirty people there. Yeah. yeah. And we I just... usually get the monster bird and I cook everything. But uh, this year we decided to hold back because I've been I've been out of out of state all year working. So now that I'm back, I just don't want to do it. Marjorie, what's the largest turkey you ever made? Oh, 18 to 20, maybe in that range. How about you, Paula? Oh, about the same. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, that, that would feed about. 10. I think the trick to, the trick with the turkey is not to well, aside from you know deep frying or whatever people do, but um, I think most people overcook it, and then it mm. tastes like sawdust. The other, the other <laughs> is if you buy one of those frozen birds, half the weight is water. They they inject. Uh, they say it's pre season. They inject it with a gallon of water. So when you're yeah. getting a twenty pound bird, it's actually only about a sixteen. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, uh, this thing my is, birds that I get is is fresh kill, so it's it, you get you get bird nothing else. I may be wrong, but I always thought the first twelve pounds were almost dead weight. I mean, it wasn't everything over twelve pounds was the meat. 
they they fill it you, when you notice all that ice in there it's how they can afford to sell a turkey for less than market price on meat yeah Mar well water. marjorie marjorie doesn't buy the you buy them thawed right you don't buy <laughs> yeah, it's full. yeah. Hmm. so what you're saying is don't buy them frozen yeah like the butter balls that the ones that they give that you get at the supermarket what did you call me Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You don't know the butter. I I did the butterball one year, and they were pretty good. Oh, we yeah. always loved them. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah, pretty good. The seasoning's basically just salt water, which adds weight to it. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> Where'd you find the chickens? Look at that. <laughs> huh? You've never seen my chickens? <laughs> There's cows here too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and wait, here's Alex's joke, except he's not a grizzly. Here. <laughs> I want to see the chickens. I'll bet you, kid. I bet the you. Bear, bear, I don't want to let him out when the bear's there. He'll eat him. Yeah. With the chickens. <clears throat> chickens. Here's a chicken. I cooked <laughs> a turkey. Oh, there they are. I I cooked this turkey for my friends who mm -hmm. are from Argentina. They had never had a turkey before. They wow. loved it. They Tur turkey is pretty much an American uh, yeah. owl, I think. That's oh. why we eat it on Thanksgiving. They're, they're coming in Argentina. Yeah, they are not get Thanksgiving either. Boy, that room is crowded. <laughs> you, you think it's crowded? You should smell it. <laughs> but turkeys are common in South America. I we used to get one when I lived in Brazil. Oh, really? Years. Yeah. Are they really? Yeah, they... Except they, the word is Peru. That's so the word Portuguese word for turkey is Peru. Peru. Okay. Yeah, Peru. So I wonder if they have turkeys in Europe. Mostly in the governments. I mean, because well, you know, I would but imagine, we, I would imagine you could take turkeys and grow them anywhere as long as you have one turkey screwing another turkey. You just you just plant the egg and add water. And, <laughs> and <wait. grow. laughs> oh man. Uh, and and uh, Charlene, did I ask you what you were going to do on Thanksgiving? No, my daughter-in-law and I are cooking. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. my my uh, kids and their spouses yeah. are cooking, and my grandkids. Oh, how nice! About, nice. How, about, how about you, um, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Burger? Yeah, I'm going to my knees. Oh yeah, you said that already. Yeah, right. Yeah. I uh, okay, I forgot you said it, and then when you said it, I remembered you said it. Good. Because who can forget that? That's um, right. Len, right what, are you, what are you doing? You know, we're just going to go over to our friend's house and uh, hang out over there. We used to go to my sister's, but uh, she stopped doing it. So went to visit my mom on Thursday. She just turned 95. So Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I got to see her. So it's all good. We're just going to hang out with our friends with, and watch football, Charlie. Thanks. For well, Marjorie still likes to host, don't you, Marjorie? <laughs> You, you I stopped see, cooking, but I do like to host. You like to host, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, well, I make the turkey if it's half done by somebody else. It doesn't matter, you know. I just like the leftovers of the turkey. That's. I that's love the leftovers. They do turkey sandwiches for days, mm. right? right? I love it. Yeah. Turkey sandwich the day after with gravy and oh, stuffing. Yeah. Uh, it, the best. You, then you make the soup, and then I get to eat the soup for a while. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Soup and your amazing. point is, my point is, wonderful. you know, there's a limit to how much I can have turkey before I go enough turkey. Not me. Is there a steak anywhere? Not me. A, yeah. How about you? Uh, you're probably going out, right, uh, Jeff? To somewhere? No. Uh, you're doing it there, huh? We're gonna just Pam and I are gonna be ourselves, and then the next day, Andrew and his girlfriend are gonna come. So they switch from one family to the other. Well, I see. So they then come over and eat the rest of your turkey. Yeah, but we're not going to even have a turkey. And they don't like no. a turkey. We don't like a turkey. Have so. you ever, but yeah, but you know, there's something about turkey and Thanksgiving. Ham and Thanksgiving, too. Well, no, but, yeah. but, no, yeah. but no, when people tell you, uh, we, instead of a turkey this year, we made a ham, you go. Yeah. No, they serve them both out. <laughs> you know? oh, no, Lord. but I've gone places where they've gone, we're going to have a ham oh, this year. Yeah. Oh, God. We're gonna, we're gonna have seafood. Turkey. We're gonna get the turkey from the wet market in Wuhan. I hear they're quite tasty. <laughs> they're very good. They're very good. They're very good. They come with with a pleasant <clears throat> surprise. There's too. none. If you cook it right, there's none of that COVID aftertaste. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Brian? Where are you going? What are you doing? You're gonna. 
Uh, we're hosting, and uh, her parents will come over and make some Vietnamese food. Some Vietnamese food. Yeah, Ben Sao. Ben Sao is like a, it's like a, um, like a pancake, and they put like, um, uh, it's like made out of egg, and then they put like meat in there and bean sprouts and stuff, and fold it up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's my favorite. So yeah, I thought you're. you're she you're... said. Your 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 uh, in laws are from Vietnam, right? Yes. So I figured they'd get a turkey and napalm it. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting a cat joke. <laughs> I was expecting a joke. It's gonna be a big egg roll joke. Yeah. 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 Vietnam food is yeah, wonderful. So it, I love it. Oh, Vietnam food! I've had it. It's very food. good. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Um. What I, I used to have like uh, is this noodle dish, uh, yeah, Vietnamese. Yeah. The pho, uh, yeah. Bowl of pho. Anyway, really good, really good. I hear the food from Laos is lousy. Lousy, lousy, lousy. Okay, all right. Yeah. See. Well, I I guess everybody, uh, a lot of the people, Norm, some of the people that call didn't call today because it is a holiday oh, week. Yeah. Uh, Marjorie always goes, oh, it's a holiday week, but it's the end of the week. People still going to work and doing stuff like that, you know. People are taking off. No, they not. Long, like almost a week off. No, I, the week off for me has always been between uh, Christmas and uh, New Year's. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh. I always took that off. Because I figured, you know, if I'm doing a radio show, there's nobody going to be listening that week. They're going to have the lowest listenership you could possibly have. You know, Christmas and New Year's are on Mondays this year, so that could be interesting <laughs> for this show. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's see here. So we, we miss, we miss, well, no, we'll be off from, you know, that Monday to the following Tuesday. <clears throat> Well, maybe you can reschedule a Tuesday one or something. Oh, the Monday one. Maybe I'll do the. Should yeah. I do the Monday one on those? No. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Uh, New Year's Eve show, please. New Year's Eve oh. show, please. Oh, yeah, we did that last year. We, we did that every year. That's a that was fun. Every year. That was fun. I will do a New Year's Eve show. Thank that you. Was fun. But it will be that at night fun. because we have to get close to New Year's yeah. Eve. Yeah. <laughs> it's only. It'll be 9 p.m. for Len and I. Yeah, that's right. So, so anyway, that would be a, that would be Sunday, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. It'd be a Sunday. So if I did it, then I could say we're not going to do a Monday show. Why not do it? Huh? Do the Monday show. I'll try it. You know, I mean, I this is the one thing I get real joy out of. So you know, yeah. it's, it's not a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> I'm sure you will be. I don't think you leave that chair all week. <laughs> no. Uh, I love what he has there. Have you read a shirt today? Yeah, that's a good one. English is important, but math is importanter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But what would you think of it? By the way, quickly, what did you think of uh, the rocket going up the other day? Oh, the one that exploded? Huh? The one that exploded? Well, you see, that's the way people remember it. That actually was a successful... Very launch. successful test, yeah. Very successful test. Um, when something explodes, you learn a lot more from it than when it doesn't. You know? And and they have learned a lot by, by trial and error here. Yeah. Uh, and that ship, that's going to be the big heavy lifter. Yep. Uh, It'll take us to Mars. Take, that can something. hold that rocket can hold what a hundred people. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, and 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 for the moon, it can carry a lot of stuff up there that they're yeah. going to need to survive. So it, it really is the going to be the workhorse of of space. To be honest with you. So can we have a say in who we can send up there? That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, who could that be? <laughs> well, no, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't send it. You mean you want to send Trump? Is that what you want to do? <laughs> no, I didn't. I really didn't have anybody in mind. We, I just thought the idea was nice. We have cluttered up space enough with our space garbage. I don't want Trump up there. You know, uh, talk about talk about heavy lifting. 
But uh, no, <laughs> this, this is a rocket I really want to see work because this is the one that's going to, not the small yeah. ones are just taking people up to the space station. Now, this thing is going to land on the moon and be almost its own habitat. Yeah, we're going to have our own base up here. Yep. Moon base. Yep. Yep. I'm li I hope I live to see it. I don't want to live to see that stuff because I, 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 all my life, that's been what I've dreamed about, you know? How many here, quickly, how many here? Oh, God, <laughs> look at it. So, <laughs> you are getting moon. So great. Oh. And, but who you here? You can shine one up, you can go. <laughs> who here? If you were lived long enough and whatever, and somebody said, okay, you, you can go to Mars. How many here would Mars? want to go? Not, Mars is a long way. Mars is a long way away. Yeah, but, not my lifetime. But, but you want, oh, okay, let's say the moon. How many would go? That, to absolutely, yes, yeah. yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, the women don't want to go to the moon. Do you notice Why? I, they're, they're from they, Venus, aren't they? Why? Too much why? dust up there. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> What's that? Can I, can I mention there, up there there are no Republicans? Okay? <laughs> and that's the only political comment I'm going to make today. I just noticed that we run out of time, you know, uh, and it's uh, always the hour of the week. Hmm? It's the fastest hour of the week. Of the week. It's it a really great is. hour. It's a great hour with great people, friendly people, having a good time, uh, and. Uh, the only, uh, you know, and, and the three holdovers for my night show are three people I absolutely adore, you know. So it's uh, it's really it's really great. Uh, everybody, uh, I want to thank you for your participation today. I'm, wor I'm worried about Mandy. I hope if you're listening, Mandy, to this, write me and tell me you're OK. That's all I care. <laughs> I think she said she was going on a trip. Did I she? think so, too. Oh, yeah, wow. that sounds oh. familiar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I will. I will divert to you. Is that the word? I'm losing the control of the English language. Am I doing okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always with right there with a compliment, Marjorie. <laughs> you know. But anyway, I I really I really enjoy this, and I thank Andrew for being here. He adds greatly. To the program with cows and chickens and moons, <laughs> stuff like that. And uh, also thanks to uh, Charlene. You, you're wonderful. Lovely. Love having you here. Uh, uh, thanks to Paula 11 and also her sister, Paula 12. Oh, no, again. <laughs> Every time I say Paul 11, I go, Paul 11. It was like, uh, you know, Ocean's 11, right? <laughs> yeah, Paul 11. <laughs> Len LaFrisco, God, you're great. Love you. Marjorie, shut up and make dinner. Uh, <laughs> That's my point. What's for dinner, Marjorie? Here, watch this. What's for dinner, Marjorie? Whatever you want to make, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. You have a bunch of stuff frozen in there. No, it's your turn. It's my turn? Mm hmm I think she smoked too much pot this afternoon. Nothing. Char Charlie Wallace, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Jeff, always a privilege. And Brian, we know that it gives you something to do while you're driving. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye as we hear Edward Berger sign us off by saying, That's all, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you later.